Hi, good morning and welcome to this morning's devotion. I'm re reading again from Living the Message, uh, Eugene Peterson. And this morning it's um, enslaving. And uh, he writes, All of us grow up with an inferiority complex. Some of us are able to disguise it better than others. But the feelings of inferiority are there all the same. One reason is that during the most formative years of our lives, we were small, less knowledgeable, weaker and less experienced than the important people in our lives, parents, teachers, older children in the neighborhood. There was always someone around who was better than we were in some way or other. We lose some of those feelings as we mature, but never entirely. We're almost always vulnerable to self-doubt. Am I worth anything at all? Does anyone care if I really exist? If I disappeared tomorrow, how long would it take before everything was normal? A week? A month? A year? We try in various ways to become indispensable to people around us so that we can have our significance verified. But our efforts are not convincing. We cannot experience freedom when we live that way. A feeling of inadequacy is enslaving. No matter how free we are, free we are told that we are, if we don't think we are worth anything, we will not be motivated to express our strengths, we will not be confident in developing our gifts, uh, will not feel up to enjoying the blessings of the day. And he's, he's taken from Galatians 5 verse 26, which reads, that means that we'll not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. Um, yeah, that's that's an ongoing battle, isn't it? Uh, in, in many ways. Um, in some ways, you know, during this pandemic, um, we're, we're asked to, to operate in, in the shadow side. I mean, the, the side that we're not strong in. Um, if we had a list of weaknesses and strengths, sometimes our weaknesses is what's highlighted this this past year. Um, many of us thrive with being with people. That's taken away. Many of us thrive with uh, holding the hand of someone who is sick or dying. That's taken away. Um, or being with family, uh, extended family, um, different things that we, that we miss. Um, having to, to de delve in a world that we're not familiar with. Kids are more adept at digital stuff than, say, someone my age is kind of on the cusp of it, but it's not as natural. And so we've been forced into a lot of things. And it makes us feel inadequate, like I should be doing much better at this. I should be, I should be um, thriving in this. I should be able to put that aside and just focus on what's good and the gifts and be thankful for what I have. And, and we do, and, but it's sometimes hard to, to push that away because it creeps in. Um, Paul says this, and Paul writes so many letters, and he, and I imagine he's written more than is, is included in, in, in scripture that we, we call scripture. Um, but Paul makes a point, you know, it's it's the demon of self comparison or a comparison with others, and we're each unique gifts of God, and God created us uh, to be individual, to be unique, to take that that part of us and, and interact with other people, you know, like pieces of a puzzle that will interact and, and fit together. And, and our strengths complement your weaknesses and your weaknesses, your strengths complement my weaknesses. And together we, uh, we can become better. We can be something new. Um, it's an identity that, that's, that's hard. The Indians call, you know, which wolf do you feed? The wolf of insecurity, the wolf of, joy or, or, or um, self-confidence. It depends on what you feed each day and, and what thoughts, you know, even in Buddhist tradition, what thoughts do you, do you, our thoughts come in, which thoughts do you hold on to, which thoughts do you kind of pass off and say, thanks for coming, but have a good day. Um, Jesus took his disciples and they had, as we read, they had a lot of inadequacies, but he still stuck with them. He still taught them. He still spent time. He never gave up. You know, and so why do we allow God to give up on us? And, and because God doesn't. And so 
to live into the, the joy that God gives us, to live into the freedom that God gives us, the uniqueness, the gifts that God gives us. Um, it, it's a wonderful thing. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, help us to recognize our gifts that you've given us, to um, realize that we are unique, that there is no comparison between you and me, that there's all we have, uh, we have each other, and we interconnect each other with each other in meaningful ways. Um, help us to know your presence in all of this and to recognize the gifts you give us. In your name we pray. Amen. So we had about 14 on Zoom last night for our midweek service, and it's it's on the Facebook page. You probably scrolled on and saw that already. Um, some people who don't use the video are not included in the in the post in Facebook, and, uh, but at least I was able to figure out how to record it and post it. Uh, so next week it'll be in Parish Hall. We'll set up about 20 seats, distanced, um, and also Zoom as well, put it on the big screen. Um, so it'll be more this weekend. I'll, I'll post the activity for next Wednesday, uh, and so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a blessing to be with you no matter what. Uh, have a, have a great day. Bye-bye.